Hi friends! Today is going to be my TBR takedown, my haul, and my wrap up for the month of June. If you are new here, the TBR takedown is a game that I've been playing trying to get my physical unread TBR down from a really high number down to something more manageable, probably around 50. Is it ever gonna happen? Well, we don't know. This year's been real rough. Um, real, real rough, like it's July now, and I am higher than what I started the year out on, and it's not because I've been buying a lot of books. It's because I haven't been reading much, and what I have been reading has not been part of the takedown. So, um, if you don't know, June is my birthday month, and I was gifted lots of gift cards for Barnes & Noble and Amazon and my local bookstore. Have I spent it all yet? No. Have I spent a large chunk of it? Absolutely. So we're going to be hauling a lot of books this month. Like this is where the stack is. It's right here. It's a big gold stack. So um, the, a lot of these I don't count, but we're going to put our number up. We started June with 117. Let's get started. So I am a patron of Beautifully Bookish Bethany here on booktube. I'm sure you've seen her before. If you've seen my face, you've seen hers. And part of being on the tier that I'm on for Bethany is that we get a, um, a box around our birthday as like a thank you for being on the tier that we're on. And usually like we'll get a letter and sometimes there'll be like an additional book or something that um, she thinks we'll enjoy. So I actually got two books in the mail from Bethany. Uh, the first of which is an arc of Hotel Magnifique by Emily J. Taylor. This book follows a girl who lives probably, I would say, close to in poverty with her little sister. Um, her name is Janie. Her sister's name is Zosa. Um, and the back of the book says, Welcome to the legendary Hotel Magnifique. Your trip to elsewhere begins now. Our offerings include an abundance of delightful enchantments and dangerous secrets, a vexingly handsome doorman with a mysterious past, a ruthless maitre d'hotel. Did I just say that with a Spanish accent, even though it's French? Absolutely. Intent on obtaining power at any cost, a dark conspiracy at the heart of the world's most famous magical hotel, and one girl determined to tear it all down for the sake of saving her sister. Prepare to depart by midnight. I did read that this was like a book for fans of Carval by Stephanie Carper, which I did enjoy. So um, I'm not counting this on my unread physical TBR. I'm cheating because it technically is an arc from 2022. So it's going to be considered an arc. We're going to do that. We're cheating. It's my game. It's fine. Okay. And Bethany so very graciously gifted me the German edition of Truth Witch. Um, if you've been here before, you know that I am obsessed with Truth Witch, um, with Susan Dennard in general. Sorry, Susan. I know that's weird. Like, I should not be obsessed with you. My apologies. Are you even here? Are you hearing this? Probably not. Does she know I exist? Yes, but that's still weird. Uh, anyway, I really enjoy Susan's works. I enjoy, um, her books. I love the Truth Witch series. I have several editions of Truth Witch, two of which now I cannot read because I have this one in German and I also have one in Serbian. So... Um, but yes, beautiful, lovely, gorgeous to add to my collection. And I'm very, very, very excited and very thankful, Bethany. I am, I'm like, I want to read it, but I can't, except I can, because I have like 43 other copies that I can read that are in English, but that's a whole other thing for a whole other day. Obviously that doesn't count as my own read TBR because A, I can't actually read it and B, I've read Truth Witch before multiple times, so. And since we're discussing Susan Dennard, let's get all of my other Susan Dennard purchases out of the way, shall we? Okay. Uh, the first of which is Sight Witch by Susan Dennard. It is a paperback of the new cover edition, which I don't have this new cover edition, so I needed to have it. However, they did a thing and I cannot with the thing that they did. So they also did it with the old copy of the, or the original of Sight Witch. It has deckled edges. But it's a, but it's, it's, it's a hardback, so not terrible. But my friends, they gave this paperback deckled edges. I have never seen a paperback with deckled edges. If you don't know what those are, that's, it's where they're like uneven. And like, 
they stick out farther than some of them stick out farther than the cover and I mean it gives it like a journaly look which makes sense for the story but ew just ew but I wanted an addition with this cover and now I have it so here she be speaking additions with different covers I also got witch shadow in the UK paperback edition it's fucking gorgeous I love these UK paperback editions they are quite lovely and I also uh, not all of them are here yet because I ordered them secondhand um, but I have the original covers for the something strange and deadly trilogy which I love and enough of you have not read not enough of you have read that's what I'm saying um, so these are the original covers of Something Strange and Deadly and A Darkness Strange and Lovely. The third book, Strange and Ever After, is not here yet, but again, I ordered them secondhand, so um, from like three different stores. And these two are here and the other one is nuts. Um, honestly, I just love these covers, like the pretty dresses. I don't know that they really have any um, actual hold over the story itself. I think this was just the theme at the time and that's why we got those the new covers. I think work for the story much better. But um you know I'm not in charge but I wanted the original covers because I have a problem. If you can't tell, I'm probably going to need a new Susan Dinner shelf because I think that one is full. Um, but you know, we live on the side of danger here. Next, I also picked up An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I read this as part of the AuthorTube Chat Book Club last month, month before, whenever, whatever. We had a long time to read it because there was a lot of shit going on. Um, so I picked up a copy because I did enjoy it. And along with that copy, I picked up the sequel, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. So this is not red, so it's going to go against my TBR. This one is not. Um, but yeah, those. I also did a thing this month where I read all four volumes of Heartstopper and I really enjoyed it. Um, we're going to talk about that later, but I'm going to confuse you by what showed up. Okay. Um, so I got editions one and volume one and volume two yeah but I also got volume one in Spanish now volumes three and volumes four say they're still coming they were out of stock when I ordered them these were also out of stock when I ordered them how did I get this I don't know so I have a Spanish edition probably going to resell that or I don't know use it for practicing my Spanish maybe um, but I have volumes one and two. They're gorgeous. They're lovely. I am like ready to sit down and read them in a physical form um, because I read them on my phone before, which is difficult, but not undoable. But these are fantastic. Again, we'll talk about those a little bit later. Also books I've already read that I picked up because I wanted to own copies of were Bird and Falls by Cat Ellis and Harrow Lake by Cat Ellis. These are spooky YA, which is kind of what I'm writing right now. So I'm enjoying picking up these spooky YA stories that I'm enjoying. And then I'm also like getting to live right here, right next to me. Um, so I'm loving that right now. I also recently read and decided to pick up Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. And the last two are new books. I picked up The Last Legacy by Erin Young. This is part of her fable series so fable namesake the last legacy is not actually part of that series but involves characters that are related to it it's like a standalone from that world don't know what it's about other than that but uh we picked her up because obvious reasons i need to clean it though because the there was a sticker on the front and she very sticky still and the last book that i purchased that has shown up is Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. I've read the first two books in this. It's a, they are adult romances set at a, a renaissance fair that's set up during the summer. Um, if you don't know, I love renaissance fairs and I love romance. So this series has been great. I've read the first two and really enjoyed them. Um, this one is a story between April and Mitch and I'm very excited for it. Now that you've seen that giant stack, let's talk about the books that we read. The first of which is Legends and Lattes. 
by Travis Baldry. This is a story, um, it's, I think this tagline is a story of high fantasy and low stakes and it really is that. It's in a high fantasy world. Our main character is an orc or an ogre. An orc? I believe an orc. And she is retiring from the guild game and she wants to open a coffee shop and it's literally just us opening a coffee shop with her, deciding like what's going to be on the menu, re, um, restoring the store from like an old stable into a coffee shop and rebuilding it and making friends with the t local townspeople and it was incredibly adorable. I ended up giving this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Again, I loved the characters. I think they were really well put together and had a really enjoyable time reading it. One of the things about this book is that I read or I listened to the audiobook and it is narrated by the author who is was predominantly an audiobook narrator before he became a writer and you can tell like he had a great time narrating this book because it was a really fantastic listen. Uh, one of my notes is um, literally I period cried period over period a period sword exclamation point. Um, I actually cried over a sword. There's a moment, there's a moment towards the end and I cried and it was about a sword. So it was very beautiful. It was so good. This book is currently maybe a little difficult to find. It was self-published and is now being traditionally published because of its popularity. Um, yeah, I believe it's being picked up by Tor. Uh, so if you are able to pick up a copy, um, it is available in some places, still have like back stock and some don't. Um, but if it's not available to you right now, it should be in the next couple of months because it is republishing like late summer, early fall. I then read Iron Widow by Zeron J. Zhao. I give this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows our 18 year old main character who in the world that she lives in, the people, the women specifically, are oftentimes given to the government as um, like a partner for these male fighter pilots. Uh, a lot of times the girls will die. It is just something that happens and like the government will give you money for basically offering your daughter as a sacrifice. Her older sister was sent off to one of these male pilots and was actually killed before she was ever even part of the, um, they call them chrysalises, you man a chrysalis. Um, but her sister was killed before she was ever actually put into battle. So she didn't make any money for their family. Their money's, family's still poor. And they're like, you know what, we'll just sell our second daughter into that because we've got a son. We don't need these girls anyway. Um, and it basically, and they find out that she is more powerful than what they expected her to be. And the story's about her just like knocking down the fucking patriarchy, which I'm here for. So I never ended up writing a review for this book. My note essentially says, I'll come back to this later, which will never happen anytime I write. I'll come back to this later. It's never going to happen. Don't expect it to. Um, but basically, the reason why this book did not rate higher is because I, I don't know if you've been around in the world this month, like June, the world in general. Um, seeing the way that these women were treated is a reflection of the way that women are treated in our real life. And sometimes it's just really hard to read stories like this. You know, part of the reason why I read is to escape the drama of real life. And so when so much of what's going on in the real world is reflected in the story, even though I think those stories are important and it's important for us to know what's going on in our real world, um, sometimes it's just not what I want from a book. And so it was really hard to separate the two and it just was, there were points where I was physically nauseous reading about some of the things that were happening to these women and the things that they had to live through um, because I am thinking about things that women in the real world have to live through and I just it makes me so viscerally angry sometimes that it's hard to read but I did enjoy the story I think it was fantastic there's like a third act plot twist that will throw you for a fucking loop um, everybody has been shouting about this book for a long time um, since it came out and I absolutely agree it is fantastic I love it I cannot recommend it highly enough if you are able to handle um, some of the darker side of being a woman in a patriarchy um, some of those things are discussed I think the author's note discusses how um, Zeron is um, 
Chinese and some of the characters or the inspiration is from China of the past but that the story is China of the future if that makes sense like she has changed the way that the history was written in order to make the story work for her which I think is absolutely fine that doesn't bother me I like I like liberties with with uh, with history because sometimes it makes for a better story but a lot of the things that they talk about the things that were done to women like foot binding and just being married off and being considered less of a human because you're a female it just if you're not prepared for those types of things probably not the best book to walk into um, but the book overall is really good and I think has a very important message and I think something that we should all read at some point whether you like YA or not. Um, also this book is polyamorous so like you know if none of the other things that I've sell, said sell you on it there's that. Uh, then we're going to talk about these guys. Heartstopper volumes 1, 2, 3, and 4. I read them all on the same day. Um, I gave it overall 4.5 stars. I did not like rate them all individually again because I read them all in one day and it would be hard to figure out like where I was at in the plot trajectory to decide you know overall it's fine. Anyway um, if you haven't heard the entire world screaming about Heartstopper yet like do you live under a rock? Um, but Heartstopper is about two boys Charlie and Nick and they um, just have a lot of queer pining and it's the best thing ever. It's not but it is. You know what I mean? You know what I mean. I really thought that I would enjoy the the graphic novels. I thought that I would enjoy them but I did not expect to enjoy them as much as I did. Um, the later novels volumes do discuss a lot of um, disordered eating and depression so if you have issues with that know that going in. I do think that Alice navigated things very healthily. Um, things are sort of dealt with and kind of explored and I think that it was done very well. Um, I also immediately went to where she posts them online and read everything there is of volume 5 so far because I was obsessed by that point. So I do feel like this book is a very accurate portrayal of being in high school and falling in love for the first time. So there's, you know, a lot of very good things to say about these books. And I just, I mean, just look at them. They're, they're fantastic. They're lovely. They're wonderful. Um, if you haven't picked them up yet, you absolutely should. I then read A Prophecy and Ash by our very own Julie Zetopoulos. And I gave that a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I had a fan-fucking-tastic time. If you don't know Curse and Ash, which is right here. Here she be. She's also right there. Um, if you are unaware, A Curse and Ash is about a girl named Ashlyn who is a witch and also part fae. She has the ability to be kind of on both sides of the human and fae veil and she works with a detective dealing with fae crime in the human side of the veil. Uh, in this world the witches need a partner called a rafty who help them with their magic and give them like something to ground to and she's also betrothed to a very hulking fae lover who is not really a lover but maybe will be in the future who knows not me oh except it, I do know. I do know and now you do too. I obviously can't really talk about like you know my review for the second book because it would be spoilers for the first book and if you haven't read the first book yet first off why not? Second off I don't want to spoil you because it's a fantastic time um, but the first book does deal with Ashlyn meeting her Ravdi who is Reardon who really doesn't want anything to do with magic and so having to overcome that plus they kind of like each other might be a little bit of a romance but also she has a uh, betrothed who's Faye and it's a very interesting story. Um, it is a little polyamorous. It is a little spicy. It is a world uh, building fantasticalness. I loved the first book, loved the second book. Currently dying. Um, if you have read the first book and you want to see my review of the second book, I will be linking in the description box down below all of my reviews, full reviews for the books that we're talking about today. And the last book that we're going to talk about, which was also an arc, is So This Is Ever After by F.T. Lukens. I gave this a 4.75 out of 5 stars. I call this like the D&D guild quest group. You know, you've got all of your main components. You've got the chosen one, the mage, the thief, the, the warrior, some other people. Um, so this story follows our group of friends after they've finished 
the prophecy. So the prophecy was that the chosen one would kill the current king and then like the kingdom would flourish and prosper for a thousand years or something of that sort. Um, so Arik is the one who is destined to kill this king who is evil. He kills the king. He puts the crown on. He's like, ha ha ha. You know, I'll be the king for like the next 20 minutes while we go and rescue the princess, except they go to rescue the princess and that bitch is dead. And so he has to figure out how to navigate being the king of this kingdom while also being married. Because part of being the king of this kingdom is that you have to be married and tie your soul to another person to evil out, evil out? even out your temperaments. There we go. That'll answer more questions. Um, the story is literally just like them building up this kingdom and finding love for our main character, Arik. I keep it 4.75 out of 5 stars. It is the queer pining story of my heart. So two other books that I read this month, which were Heartstopper and Legends and Lattes, I think that So This Is Ever After is a perfect blend of those two books. Like you have the queer pining love story and you have this group of friends building up a kingdom. They, you know, are setting up uh, a military and the all of the defenses and trying to get the trust of the people who live there and building new treaties with the other countries and like so you're really just seeing them like build up this world and there are high stakes technically because Arik may die if he doesn't get his partner but it's very similar in feel to those two stories so it was like a really perfect way to end out my month reading something that encapsulated the thing that I loved of two other books that I enjoyed so if you like those kind of stories you'll probably enjoy So This Is Ever After as well. I should mention that this story has the world that we're in there's no um like societal standards on who you end up with there is no like straight gay whatever like you just are whatever you are and no one really cares um you love who you love and let's move on which is fantastic because when you have a fantasy world and you're able to do that you should do that why do we you know set ourselves at the social norms of the world that we live in that's weird i do want to mention that as this is a ya and a romance if you have issues with the miscommunication miscommunication trope that was a hard one to say today it does deal a little bit with that but i feel like the way that our main character and our love interest spoke with one another um like they kind of talked about their feelings but they talked about them in a vague enough way that they both mistook what the other was saying um and I feel like for, you know, 17 year olds who had just killed a king and taken over a country, I'm going to give them a little bit of room to grow here. Um, so it does have a miscommunication trope, but I feel like it was well done and made sense for the story that we were in. So that's it. That's everything I read this month. I did have some DNFs this month, but we'll talk about that in my next arc wrap up. But of the, everything that I read, my lowest rating was a 4.25. Like June was a fantastic reading month. I had a great time reading all of these stories and just having a good time um, buying books, giant stacks of books, um, but also just enjoying reading a bunch of queer literature for the month and it all being like queer joy, which is something that you don't get to experience enough in writing, in my opinion. But I had a fantastic time. You'll notice up above, uh, as I always say, if you weren't keeping track of the numbers, then I would do because I do that for you. Um, our new number is 120, which means we went up by three. At this point, I just don't even care. Like, I just don't even have it in me to care. Um, will TBR takedown continue? Yes. Am I still trying to get my TBR down? Yes. Do I feel like I'm going to need to drastically change the way I read in order to do that? Also, yes. Um, I did a... I mean... The middle of the year let's just bump in a little bit of an end of the middle of the year uh stat for you so this year you're gonna get a little bit of july in here because i am also you know doing july but i've read 40 books this year which considering last year i read 120 is kind of low but i've read 40 um which is more than what my goal was for the year i did bump my goal up um but of those books i have read one book off of my physical tbr 16 arcs, not mentioning the arcs that I DNF'd, um, eight rereads, and borrowed 15 from the library that were just library books that I borrowed so I could read because I was interested. Clearly I need to stop reading library books and read more of the books on my shelves, but I have been really reading like 
new books and I've been enjoying that. So this year I have read, based off of years published, I've read 15 books from 2022, 9 books from 2021, and then the rest were from 2020 or earlier. So I feel like, I mean, I've read, of the 40 books I've read, 24 have been from the last two years, more than half from recent years. So I feel like I'm reading a lot of new books, which is great. Interestingly, I've read 11 middle grades, 12 YA, and 17 adult books. I've been reading a lot of adult romance, apparently. But I definitely need to read more of my physical TBR books. I will be doing some, like, 10 book try chapters. Um, I've just finished filming the first one, which you'll be seeing next week on Tuesday while I'm on vacation. And I think that's probably going to be a thing that I keep doing every couple of months. Um, just picking like five to ten books off my shelf that are books that I've had, you know, since 2017 or earlier and giving them a shot, seeing if I like them or not. And I think that's going to be how I'm going to get some of this TBR down because again, I'm not the same reader I was in 2017 and I don't think many of us are. So, um, you know, just checking in and seeing what I like, what I think I might like. I also have a better understanding of what I like now than what I did in 2017 because I've read a shit ton of books since then. So oh, I know that there's a lot on my shelves that is not really what I'm interested in anymore, but it's fine. That's gonna be it for me today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!